So in a previous video, we did a look breakdown with some red Gemini footage um, using the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve Studio. We also use some paid DCTLs and a LUT. Now, not everyone has the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. So today, what I thought we would do is we'd only use things that you can do in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So today I'm going to show you how to make halation for free. I'm going to show you how to get free film grain with an endless loop, which is really handy. And we're going to talk about density and we're going to talk about filmic saturation. So I'm going to show you how to do all this stuff in the free version of Resolve. I almost said paid them, but in the free version of Resolve. So let's jump in into Resolve and have a look. G'day, welcome back. We have our footage here. It is Canon uh, Mark II R1. I'm pretty sure the footage is. It's really nice looking footage. So we don't have to do a whole bunch. So today what we'll do is I'll show you those things. We won't go through the whole grade, but I will show you how to make collation, et cetera, et cetera. The only thing that I've done with this footage so far is I've done a quick balance because it was a little warm and I've also done a CST. So uh, this is actually compressed Canon footage. So we're working in Rec 709 here. So Rec 709, et cetera, et cetera. Here is our settings here. If you want to have a look at that also in our color management here, we can see we have our timeline color space, DaVinci white gamut, intermediate output, Rec 709 2.4. Now, if we go to our timeline node, as you can see, for our CST, we have DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, then we're going to that Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. So everything is looking really nice. Now, we went from Input Color Space, DaVinci White Gamut, because that's the one we're working in with this footage. So if we go back to our first one. As you can see, DaVinci White Gamut. That is everything that's happening before our little node here and with luminous mapping, et cetera, et cetera. So you can just copy these settings if you'd like. We're gonna be doing our look in the timeline node graph. Now, why is this important? Because the way you build your split tones, it should work for the most part over all your clips. Now, if you do, if you have footage that is, let's say really crushed or has blown out highlights, maybe it's not gonna work that way and you have to do some other adjustments, but all the footage I have today, if we have a look, is nice looking footage. So we have this Ursa 4.6 footage. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. And all I've done here is a um, color space transform. Then we have some Blackmagic Pocket 6K footage. And then we have this red footage, which is from the other day. And then we have the color space transform. And we actually have some nice looking phantom footage, really good looking phantom footage. So I've done nothing with this footage, even though it looks like I've done a whole bunch. This is all empty, so just ignore that. Alrighty, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do that look in our timeline node. So what we can do is come to our look here. We're gonna go to our uh, OFX. Now, everything that I'm gonna talk about today, I'm gonna leave a link below where you can download it to. So just type in DCTL or DC. And for your DCTL list, go down to Cole Henderson's Fantastic gray card. Now make sure this is before your ODT. Otherwise you're gonna get different results. So we've put that on there. Now in our little curves here, as you can see, we have a line and that's telling us where middle gray is. So we can just put a point down here and not move it. I always move it. Now to get rid of this, simply just right click and then remove OFX plugin. Now we have a middle gray point or now look, really important, you don't want to be messing with the middle grade. So let's look at our image here. Let's take these clips off, make this a little bit bigger. And we have a really nice looking image. We have nice light, but we don't really have any color separation. So if we do our little vector scope here, it is, okay, a little bit, but we can make this look better. So let's go back to our waveform. In our look here, we're gonna make a cooler shadows and then warmer highlights. So the only thing I would say is when you're doing your look, if you're doing everything YRGB, so when I did that point before, I had everything selected. So if it's not working for you, maybe you don't have it all selected. So make sure they're all gained. Now, if we're doing this YRGB all gained together, we're actually adding contrast in your image. So if you don't wanna add contrast this way, then take off YRGB, or take off Y, sorry, and work with YRGB. But I like to work with them all gain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a point just down here. It's gonna protect my darker areas and I'm just gonna pull down to add a little bit contrast in those shadows. 
okay. Just a little bit like that. And then I'm going to bring up my highlights in my midtones and then bring it down ever so slightly. And I need my glasses on. Okay, so we've got some nice looking contrast here. So let's go full screen. So this is before we've done any adjustments and this is afterwards. So we already added saturation in because when you add contrast in, you're adding saturation in. So it's something that's really important. So you have nice light, we have nice shadows, we have a good looking image, but we have no split tones so far. So simply what we could do is take our red channel here and in our shadows, we're just gonna bring it out ever so slightly. And then in my green channel, I'm just gonna bring it out even more and I'm gonna actually make this a little bit bigger to make it a little bit easier on myself. So I'm going for a teal look, I'm not going for a green look. So just bring out those greens ever so slightly. And then let's warm up those highlights. So in our highlights here, I'm gonna bring out some of that blue. Not too much, it's already a pretty warm looking image. So, and then I'm just gonna take out some green. Now, the reason why you take out green or you split it between blue and red is that's how you get that nice goldy yellow look. So as you can see, if you look at our image here, let's make a big screen off and on. So we already have nice looking highlights. So I'm not gonna do too much with that, but we have nice warm skin tones and we have nice darker areas. So off again, and then on. We have nice color separation here. We can actually probably push it a little bit more just for the tutorial's sake. So again, let's bring it up. And let's take out some of that red just a little bit more. Maybe. I don't want to go too far. And then to take out that green again. Okay, so let's go full screen. Off and on. So we have a really good looking image here. We have nice color separation from our character here to the background. So off, on. So we have that nice faint green color. It's not overpowering. It still looks quite natural, which I really like. So we can have a look now on the other clips. But before we do that, I think that's something that's really interesting. If we go to our clips here, we can actually see what that split tone looks like if we put it on a grayscale ramp. So we can go to a compound clip here. And then if we bring up our waveform, we can see that split tone. So cool the shadows down here and then warm the highlights here. So if you ever want to see what your split tone is doing, just make a compound clip in the edit page for grayscale and you can have a look because we're working in the timeline color space here. Well, we're working in the timeline, which has that color space here. We can actually see what's going on. Looking really good. We don't have any crazy crushed shadows. We don't have any blown highlights. So. If we go across to our other looks here, we can turn that off, we can turn that on, and as you can see, nothing crazy is happening. We're not making colors in a weird direction or anything like that. Now, this image here, I would say it was already a little bit warm, so we'd want to just back that off just a little bit. And our lady at the train station, again, off, on. Looking nice. Our red Gemini footage off and on. It's a simple split tone. It's not gonna make your image look fantastic. Well, let me take that back. It's a simple split tone, so it's not gonna be the finishing product when it comes to your grade. There's a lot more work that you'd wanna do on this grade here. And just our last clip here, off and on. And with this clip here, we're not gonna grade this one today, but I really like this clip. I have done a couple of grades on it. And I'd say you really want to push those colors because it looks really, really nice. It has fantastic set design. I mean, orange cup, green cupboard, you can't go much better than that. So now that's our split tone. Let's move on to more filmic saturation. So now we're working in the clip node structure for our saturation here. So in our saturation, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do saturation this way. So just down here, I'm going to do it in a way where we're working in a more filmic saturation, meaning that when we're adding in saturation to our image, we're actually adding in density to those colors. So we're not 
brightening those colors, we're adding in nice saturated density. That makes sense? I don't think it does. So we can right click our saturation node here, come to our color space, come to HSV to saturation vibrance. Then we only want to work in saturation. So we can right click again, go down the channels, take channel one off, go down channels again and take channel three off. Almost said to. Now we want to working in our game and <laughs> our gamma and gain. So in our gamma here, we're going to push up those lower mid saturated colors and then our higher saturated colors, we're going to bring that down. So in our gain here. And let's make this a little bit bigger. So we're adding in more saturation. Now I don't want to go too crazy. I'm not a fan of overly saturated image. So I'm going to say about there looks pretty good. And then I'm going to say about there. So let's make that big screen. That's with that two saturation vibrance off. And that's with that on. And as you can see, those colors are really nice. They're not overpowering. It looks more natural than it would if you use the saturation. Now, I'm not saying the saturation in Resolve is bad, but this is just another way to get a different result, which I think is actually a more pleasing result. So I think with this image here, we can do another thing to really separate her from the background here. So we're going to talk about hue versus hue, and we're going to talk about this window here. We're still working in the node clip area. So in my hue uh, node here, I'm going to go across and I'm going to go to our curves and then we're going to go to hue versus hue. Now I want this blue to be more of a tealy blue. So normally I would do this using a DCTL, but of course today we're using the only free version. So we can see the blue actually on our curves here. So we're going to make a point here and here. Now we're going to bring it up to get more tealy color or tealy green color. I don't know what you'd call that. And this is a nice color, but it's way too far. So I need to back that off. So we're going to go to hue versus saturation and I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time I'm going to pull it down a bit. And let's go back to hue versus hue and maybe back that off just a little bit. Let's go big screen and have a look. So this is before, and then this is afterwards. I think it's a little too saturated. So again, let's go back to your saturation. So before and afterwards, and I think that to me looks a lot more pleasing than the blue. I think the blue is too much. Our eye is directed towards that color too much. We're trying to back that off a bit. And I think that that greeny color still probably a little bit too saturated, but it isn't directing our eye. The focus should be on our character here. And I think by backing that off, changing the hue, we are actually being more focused on her than the sea. I mean, who cares about the sea, right? the ocean. The next thing we're going to talk about is that film grain that you can use free in DaVinci Resolve, which has an endless loop, which is really important. So I'll leave a link below and then you can go and download it. So we're going to do that free film grain in the timeline section of our uh, DaVinci Resolve. So the thing I would say is you can't actually back it off. So you can't bring opacity down. So the best way to get around this is where you place your node is how much the film grain is going to affect your image. So if I place it before my ODT here, it's actually going to be more prominent than afterwards. Now you should always put your film grain after noise reduction, but that is another story. So I've figured out that I like it more after my ODT. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a layer node. So let's right click, add node, add layer mixer. And then let's turn this off and then this on and then put this bad boy over here. We have that connected. We need to go up to our media pool here and we need to add that 35 millimeter mat in. So when you put that download into your folder, just right click it and then choose mat. So we can put this in here. Then we can get rid of our media pool because taking up way too much space. Then in our mat here, we're gonna connect this little green dot into here. Now, obviously that film grain is gone over our image and looks awful, but trick is, all you have to do in a little layer mixer here, right click composite mode and go to soft light. Now, the other thing is you want to come down to your 35 millimeter here and you want to come to your key section here and down the bottom here, 
we have freeze, loop, and lock mat. So if we put loop on, that's gonna keep going and going and going. So we have an endless loop, no matter how long your clip is, it's gonna keep going. Now, lock mat is interesting. If your footage is bigger than the film game you just put on, you just take lock mat off, and then you can manage how big you want it. Also, if you make it zoom bigger, you're gonna get bigger film grain. So if we take that off, and my footage fits it, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, if your footage isn't working with the film grain, just come down, take off lock mat, and then zoom in and out, and then you can change the size of film grain anyway. So we had that film grain on, and if we go to our timeline here and play that back, we have film grain on. And like I said, if you want it to be more prominent, you would put this before your ODT. But looking at our images here, this is completely free and very simple to do. And it looks really nice. Good free film grain. Good free. Good free. <laughs> the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at how to do halation for free inside of Resolve. So we're back in the clip node with our grade here. So we're going to do that halation. So halation is a bit like film grain where you put it in your node structure dictates what it's going to look like, but we're just going to chuck it at the end. So we're going to add a new node here. So Alt S to make a serial node. Then we're going to turn that into a layer node. So in our bottom node here, that's the one we're going to be working in. But first we need to change our layer mixer into our lighten. So just go to composite mode and then come down to the lighten. Lighten is the best one to do, by the way. Now, really important for me, I'm not sure other people do, but I like to turn this one into gamma linear. And to me, this gets the better result when it comes to working in that halation. So let's go across to our little, uh, sorry, blur versus blur here. We're gonna ungain it. Then we're gonna pump up the red, okay? And a little bit of green, but mostly red. Just leave blue as is, that's fine. So if we look at our image here, Obviously, it looks completely awful because that halation is going everywhere. So we need to back that off in terms of where it's hitting. So we're going to go to our curves here. We're going to gain it and we're going to bring it right down. This right down. I'm going to say about there looks pretty good. Just make this a little bit bigger and clips off. And we're just going to actually take some mid-tone detail out too because I want a kind of a soft halation look. Now, when it comes to halation, the way I like to do it is I like to go too far. Then I like to use my key to back it off. So again, let's go to our key here and let's go a little bit closer on our image here and just bring it down ever so slightly. So we have a nice soft looking image and that halation is giving that nice red outline. So Again, if you want to back that off, you can either use the key or you can go back to curves and make it even more selective when it comes to where it's going. But that is the free version of the halation in the free version of the Vinci Resolve. And I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with the way it looks. Now, you might want to do some more. I would probably say go back and change a few things with it, make it make it a little bit softer, um, maybe change that red color to make it like a little bit different. But all in all, this is a really nice start when it comes to the halation and just a few little tweaks and I think you'll get a really good looking image. The last thing we're gonna talk about today is density when it comes to resolve. Normally when I do density in resolve, I'm using a DCTL, but of course we're not doing that today. So I'm gonna show you a different way. So in our little node here, which is written as dense or den ends, we're gonna to go to this node and we're gonna right click we're going to go to composite mode and we're going to change this to luminosity. Now, when you change that node to luminosity, all you're actually doing is changing the brightness in your image. You're not changing the colors. So what we can do is go to RGB here and make this a little bit bigger. And then we're going to go to monochrome. So as you can see, we're not black and white because we're only changing light. So if we're pushing up our red here, we are increasing the brightness of that color. Now, if we bring it down, we're getting a denser, richer color. And the same goes with our blue and our green. So we don't want her to be completely dense in terms of color. We want it to be in a nice place. So I think this image here, I would have to say, 
is already sitting in a good place. So I wouldn't go crazy with it, but we can just have a look. So let's go full screen. So this is before we've done that density trick. And then this is afterwards. Now we've probably gone a little bit too far with it. I think her skin tones probably a little bit too uh, darkened down, but density is a really interesting one. I would say experiment a lot with it and find out what you like. Now, again, this is probably a little too much, but for me, that's okay. We can go back and we can change stuff later on. So that is everything that you can do inside Resolve or a little bit of everything you can do. Now for this grade here, you'd want to go back and do some more adjustments, maybe add some different contrast in. Maybe I would say saturation levels looking really good, but we could probably back off this area here a little bit more and we could do a lot more stuff to make this image really pop out. But I think that's a really nice starting point when it comes to this grade. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed these little tips. I hope it helps you out. If it has, make sure to comment below or make sure to comment below anything else you'd like to see inside a result. More than happy to answer any questions. There are no dumb questions. Ask anything you want. I'm more than happy to ask anything, more than happy to answer anything. And well, that's it. That's the video for today. So I hope you enjoyed it. I've been Drew from Haiti Films and have a great day.